Good morning, everybody. Welcome into the Winkler verse. My name is Bart Winkler. On today's episode, we will be talking with Ty Windish of the Eurostep podcast, part of the GSPN network. There is a moment behind me captured. If you are on the Dan Shaney YouTube stream, you see it all the time. There's my reflection. Giannis hoisting the championship along with Diakate, Jordan Wara, cash money. The Bucks have won a championship before. They have. It was a crazy time, but it's a joyous time. And I'm not sure if we really remember that they did that. I'm not sure if we appreciate that they did that. Because we act like it's never happened. Well, it's got a chance to happen again this year. They are the three seed heading into a first round series starting on Sunday against the Indiana Pacers. I'm as nervous as you are for the whole prospect. As I talk with Ty Windish here, I will explain that my, oh, don't worry about the playoffs way of thinking about this isn't, it isn't some confidence I have in the Bucks. I do not. In fact, I've got the opposite. But what it is, is me just choosing not to worry until it's time to worry. And then when it's time to worry, I think in the long run, I may deal with a Bucks playoff exit a lot worse than the people that I've been scolding. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll try to get a more positive look from Ty Windish. Unfortunately, I don't think that is going to happen. So commiserate with us on this episode of Into the Winklerverse, where Ty Windish joins us. This is brought to you by our good friends at Happy Place Hemp. HappyPlaceHemp.com. Promo code is BART for 25% off every order. That's right. I'll explain this. When you get an order, you get the promo code. And then on your next order, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. But you still get the promo code. That promo code always works. 25% off every time. Promo code BART for the tinctures and the balms and the gummies. A lot of different things you could use. You could use the your wrist hurts. Put a little moisture on it, the CBD. Uh, you want to enjoy yourself. Long night, long day. Enjoy the night. The THC gummies. They've got the seltzers now, which you can check out. They're in Muskego. You can stop by. Extended hours now. So you can get there after work or just go to happyplacehemp.com. Happyplacehemp.com, promo code BART, 25% off, which you may need. You may need, depending on how this postseason goes. Ty Windish, Bart Winkler, back together as the good Lord intended. Um, <laughs> so where I am at with the Bucks is... Uh, it's a it's a place of just I did not care. Yeah, um, and I think that was I had, the smarter. I, you got a lot of crap for it. I saw that was the smarter place to be. I cared I think, a lot I think I throughout had, these last month, and it wasn't fun. I think I had to like for my own sanity. I had to not care, but I, I really like. There's so much that has happened, and I think um, the sentiment is the right one where I thought this regular season was going to be so boring, where it was going to be, let's just get back to the playoffs and then whatever. Then they trade for Dame, and it's like, oh, well, now the regular season's going to be really fun uh, because they might end up with the same record, but it will be a different viewing experience. Uh, it did become a different viewing experience, um, a really, like, awful one where they would show you flashes of this is what we thought but then there was so much like them getting in their own way oh and by the way they fired a coach to hire the almost too comically perfect for the situation doc rivers so i don't i i didn't watch a lot of the season with the with the frame in mind like i'm judging something so you did you're 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 breaking down. You're analyzing, um, and and for that reason, I do. 
understand if you were someone who did that, why a series with the Pacers where you don't really know the full extent of Giannis's availability, why you think we might be done before uh, May 1st. Uh, why well, you yeah. or anyone, I, I, I totally like, if you're going to look at results, cause I keep saying, Oh, they can flip a switch. They can flip. A... I'm not flip a switch. I don't like that phrase. Yeah. I just feel like this is a different landscape. It's a different terrain. But if the problems were so strong, then I can understand people being nervous. It's the it's the million dollar or however much value question, whatever Dame's contract is. It's that that that's how much the question is worth. Um, I think I you look at it closer than ever. I did because you know I, I I think if if it was the situation that we kind of even if even with the new coach and let's just say Griffin had, had made it through if they didn't do the Dame trade, which who knows? I think it's probably more likely, frankly. Like I think the situation is less volatile. I mean, maybe it's just bad enough that it doesn't matter, but. You know, I think the the Drew version of the Bucks is probably there's probably just less people care, right? Like about the regular season in general, about the Bucks where people wouldn't before. I mean, the expectations are different. They're still high. I mean, it's still Giannis team and everything else, but whatever. I don't need to go way down that road. Um, but it was like, okay, they need to figure out how to play together. And I thought it was gonna be pretty easy. I didn't think it was gonna be like, you know, day one there their gods, but I mean you know, okay, dominant pick and roll finisher, big, yeah. dominant point guard, ball handler, outside shooter, like outside of Steph, one of the best three point shooting point guards we've ever seen in the league on, on high volume. It's like, okay, it can't be that hard. And they've made it look hard. And honestly, that's the frustrating part. Like, even if they had the 49 wins, they didn't get to 50 wins or on a 50 win pace with some of the shortened seasons for the first time since before Bud. They had always won 50 or I've been on pace to since Bud arrived. They didn't do that. I, I I could be sitting here at 49 and 33 saying, fine, you know, that's fine. They they figured their stuff out. They didn't have Giannis or Dame for how many games. And of course, Christmas time and injuries and coaching change, whatever. I think my biggest issue with them is I don't know if they have the the gear I expected to see occasionally of like, all right, Giannis and Dame are just gonna do their pick and roll and it's totally unguardable. It's, it's, that happens here and there, but it's not as regular as I want it to be. And I saw Marcus Johnson, who does a phenomenal job breaking down the Bucks whenever he's on the broadcast and on Twitter when he's not, uh, and now as the, the pod with the Bucks, shared that the Giannis and Dame minutes, the Bucks had lost them dating back to like, I think it was sometime in late March, like when they were on court together. And that's the kind of stuff where it's like, all right, I don't care. If, if everything goes to hell in a handbasket, when they're not out there together, fine. The fact that it feels like they don't have a great rhythm right now offensively when they're together is one of the things that worries me the most. And then there's just the whole Dame thing of like, oh, he just sucks sometimes? That, I didn't have that as part of my bingo card. One for 11 or ends two, what, two for 14 against Orlando in a game where you can lock up the two seed? Now, maybe it worked out. I mean, I, I forget how it would have changed if the Bucks had won, but I mean, Indiana is not the scariest first round opponent, certainly in the East when you look at the rest of them, but clearly they were trying to win that game and didn't go well. And now I think it's it's a very interesting moment for Dame, for the Bucks. On our pod yesterday, Rohan said, it's a legacy playoff series here for Dame. I mean, not just with the Bucks, yeah. but overall. I mean, this is like- Well, because everyone right. thinks he sucks now. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and, and the, the level bad. of play didn't help. He's been bad. I mean, to, he's been bad by, you know, we expected a superstar. I would say he has been like a, he has been like a struggling star. Well, yeah, he still made the all-star game and won the MVP. Yeah. Like he's still good, but I think we did have such high expectations because Damian Lillard being a Milwaukee buck is something we never thought would be possible now it feels like he's been here for six years somehow in some, <laughs> in some way. And that's where, like, when I talk about this um, to a national audience, yeah. I feel like it's it's a different view. Like, everything people look at what the Bucks did looks like an obvious mistake at the time they did it. Like, they traded for Dame. That was so exciting. And oh, then yeah. when Drew got 
to Boston, everyone's like, oh, well, now they, they lost. I mean, immediately people are saying they lost. Yeah. And I'm trying to, like, I was going through this the other day when Drew signed his big contract. Like, yeah, we love Drew. And defensively, way better. In the playoffs, he was shooting, like, 10% less yeah. from the field, from three. And so they were looking for someone that could come in and not do that, not disappear as a point guard offensively, um, knowing they'd have to give up some defensive um, skill on that side. Okay. And then they have Adrian Griffin and he's got a 31 and 13 record or whatever. And then they fire him. And th- like I've said, there's so many things that I've heard about what it was like in the building and what the coaching was like that. I don't know. I don't know what I've read, like from name. I don't know what has been told to me off the record from other people. I don't know. Like, it's just, yeah. it's just oh, a big mess. Oh, it, sauce Bart. Yeah. It was a mess though. And so, yeah. I can understand, all right, you know, there's a bigger goal here, but then the higher doc and then they have this like weird period with him. So I don't know that you can, cause I don't know that you can make any grand decision yet and grand proclamation yet about the Bucks until we see the playoffs. But also I think if we, if we just had the team we had last year healthy, I think we'd feel better about it. Like Bud Probably. and Drew and healthy. I think we'd well, I think especially we'd if that means the Boston just still has like Malcolm Brogdon. I mean, maybe yeah. they could have picked someone else. I mean, you know, but yeah, I mean, I do think that Drew being their their sixth guy, which he is, which is I'm not trying to shade Drew here. I mean, that's just look at the team and how they operate. He is very much sixth in line there, but it just speaks to like how crazy of a team that they. Well, they because they, they don't need. We needed Drew, and yeah. I am a wee guy. Everybody, we don't all know that, but we needed Drew to shoot thirty eight percent from three. We the Celtics don't need that. No, they're just like sure. If you want to, go ahead. And and he's shooting great on corners like he always does. And I actually do worry, and I think it's going to drive Bucks fans crazy. I think he might shoot a pretty decent percentage in the playoffs too, just because it's like, he's always the fourth guy on offense. I mean, it's like he had to take a bigger role, obviously in Milwaukee. And, you know, I'm not, not trying to justify the way he shot with the bucks. I mean, he also made some very poor decisions and I'm curious to see like, how often is he just able to do that? But they they can just, they can just say that we we actually never need you to handle the wall, Drew. So you're not going to be able to pull up from three with 18 seconds left while there's a six, six guy guarding, well, they don't have Giannis, but Porzingis in this scenario. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I said, and and it's funny because like once a fortnight now when Dame looks like an all NBA guy again, I get killed for it every like nine, 10 days. But I was like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't redo the trade right now when they had just lost six of seven. And people are like, are you crazy? And I'm, I'm saying, listen, to be clear, you know, I recorded a video from New England on my honeymoon, excited about the move, showing thigh in shorts, drinking a beer. Like, I'm not trying to retcon that I wasn't all for it. I thought it was a slam dunk. And I'm not even saying I'm firm in that forever going forward. I think, I mean, the play, it's, this is, we're going to find out right now if I stand on that this summer or not. I mean, this playoff series, I mean, not right now, but in five days, six days when the Bucks start against the Pacers. But um, it's just, the season has just stunk. I, I mean, the, the, the disappointment of it. And it's like you said, the excitement, it was like, oh yeah, this is it. This is the missing piece. This is the player they've always needed. And we've all known it. It's not like, you know, we made that up. I mean, oh, the, a point guard who can outside shoot. I mean, that opens up everything with Giannis and like Chris could approximate it, but you know, not the best at dribbling. And that kind of helps with being a, a point guard and perimeter player. We all love Chris, but that's just true. Um, and of course the injuries are factoring in on him and it just has not worked out well. It hasn't felt good. The whole, the coaching thing compounded it. Like it's not all because of Dame by any means, but yeah, I agree. I think we'd feel better right now if, if everything was just stayed the same, uh, as, which is hilarious now. Cause I mean, I, I thought it was the right decision to fire Bud too. It felt like he lost the locker room, but now I'm like, okay, if like four straight coaches, if you want to talk about Prunty lose the locker room is that not just on the locker room and i'm not saying doc has lost that lost them or whatever but it's like you know there's these games where they just like look apathetic way too often and it's like okay did they, did they just pick four three bad coaches or is this group just need to like be more consistent themselves and maybe stop blaming coaches well i mean people 
nationally will look at Giannis and call him a coach killer, which I don't think he is. But if I was somebody that was looking at another only, team, only the the prospects of Nick Nurse. That's all. That's the only coach <laughs> killing move he made. I mean, I, if I was trying to like get under a Bucks fan skin, I would I would say that I'd go look at you guys. Yeah, coach killer. You can't you can't uh, maintain anything. I'm Bart Winkler. Ty Windish is here. We are together. We are united in our um, like I would say a couple of weeks ago I said. If you got a million dollars, if you were right, mm. so that you're not betting this, it's not your money. Yeah, just you win. You win a million dollars if you can accurately predict what's going to happen with the Bucks this postseason. Uh, about four weeks ago, I said they will lose to the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Championship. I think getting there at this point is like. <laughs> It's gonna be hard. I like I don't know, but the, the, that's the that's the part. Like they, I, okay, I'm I'm trying to reconcile all of my feelings. It's so hard. That's the thing about this team. I've been saying this. It's a boomer bust team. I think because I'm I'm trying to say like they could easily go into this series yes. with the Pacers and sweep them. But then before that sentence gets to my tongue, I'm thinking, no, they can't. They <laughs> suck. Like there there is so I so I do understand. I do understand the the regular season part and people being worried. I'm just what I'm saying is maybe that's what I'm doing. I am also with everyone. I I I am expecting yeah. disaster too. I have just chosen not to feel it until it's yeah. time to feel it. So you guys are all feeling it in the regular season going crazy. Yeah. And I'm just like I basically am like yeah. But then <laughs> then come the playoff time if they do lose to Indiana or do get to the next, like if they don't, I, I'll probably, I'll probably be taking it the hardest of all. Cause I've got all this. Yeah, you, you didn't pre grieve. You didn't pre grieve like the rest of us. Yeah. I didn't pre grieve. Uh, I think they're the most, and I hate saying this cause it's like, this is what we said about like the KD nets. And I guess now the KD Suns. I guess this is what we say about KD teams, but I feel like they could lose any series or win every, any series. But I do think more than those teams for this bucks team, it either feels like they figure it out the first round and it's like, no, maybe, maybe that series still goes a little long just because the Giannis of it all. I mean, Shams reported today of The Athletic that it's unlikely he plays in game one. I mean, I kind of figured, uh, you know, this is the last time he'll be able to have any extended rest until the end of this postseason run. So, I mean, can you split the first two games and then bring him back in an even series, even without home court like that? That feels fine if that's what happens and and – you know, again, you're either going to win or lose regardless. It's a Pacers team that really hasn't been great since the IST. But I feel like the Bucks either figure it out and it's <laughs> complicated IST. with Giannis. I love it. Yeah, the good old IST uh, in-season tournament. For Remember, that? Not, Remember that? Remember that? Was, that feels like six years ago. The big-time Lakers over Pacers IST win and then both teams. Very weird since then. I guess the That was Lakers a fun night, Lakers though. Won. I was, like, super oh, into yeah. that game. It was a great game. I mean, I think it's going to be a fun tournament going forward. The Bucks one wasn't as fun. No. Um, but I think, and then I think, I think if they beat the Pacers, I think they win the second round. I think the Knicks are good. I think the Cavs exist, but, um, but uh, that they wouldn't see the Cavs anyway. I think the Knicks, it, it could be Sixers or Heat too. Like it could be a, a tough second round, but I think if the Bucks can get there, they'll probably have something figured out pending another, you know, unfortunate injury or whatever. And then it's like, all right, I expect them to then have a long series with Boston. I don't know if they win, beat Boston. I think that Boston team is truly awesome. But I think they'll go there and really match up with them. Or maybe they lose in like five or six to Indiana, like like they did last year. And it's it's a scare, it's an eerily similar situation, right? Of like, oh, uh, we should win. We're the favorite. Not as much. I mean, they were they're not a one seed to an eight, but still, like, I think people agree the healthy Bucks should beat that team. But we're not gonna have Giannis for all the games. And we're gonna have hampered Giannis. So can the rest of the team step up? And they did it in 21, and they got to the finals and won. And in 23, they folded. I mean, they were bad. They looked lifeless. Giannis tried to come back, but it just didn't matter at that point. Same situation. It's the same test for the non-Giannis Bucks. But you got Dame. This is the point, right? You got a superstar. Second one. I think it's a huge test on him. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, even more so, that, like, this is Giannis's team, right? But if they don't get far, this is going to be – we're going to – depending on how he plays, but – Yeah. Damian Lillard's been – 
you know, we, I had a buddy telling me, it's like, oh, well, we, all, all this time we just assumed Damian Lillard was this all-star because we just saw his highlights and we, we, the Blazers are never good and they're never on TV. And now we see him every day and we're like, oh man, this guy's got worse shooting streaks than anybody. And now they're at this uh, point where everything is up in the air. It, it's hard to say what's going to happen. I think that, uh, you know, anything, I don't know, but I don't, I guess either way, like, this is not going to be their team next year. Right. I mean, I, but the, I don't I, know. I'd be uh, surprised. But then Unless it goes do? really well. Unless it goes really well. So, Brooke, Chris, we're not trading Dame. Maybe we're trading Dame. <laughs> I mean, what's out on the table? I mean, we're it's, not firing. We're not, we're not paying a fourth head coach. No, I think, that, I think that's. Coach. I, I think I think Doc is going to be back regardless. I think Doc – we know Doc is way too good at, at explaining why things are other people's faults, and he has, I mean, a lot of easy ones here. I mean, this is not – it's not a difficult one to be like, hey, man, I, I didn't shoot 40% uh, in the series or whatever. Uh, and we'll hear from him right after the games. We'll know exactly what the what the storyline is going to be. Um, but, no, I, I, I think the least likely piece to move is probably Doc, which is – Maybe unfortunate for people. We're calling him Mr. Rivers on our show. We took his we took his doctorate took uh, doctor away. away. Yeah. Although I, I like the starting Pat Bev. I mean, it's like, again, though, what kind of desperate situation are you in? We have to start 35-year-old Pat Bev. I know he's real excited about it, but I think he also has been very boom or bust. Like, he's either got 20 and 10 and looks great or, you know, he's like a, just two points, which is, you know, fine. I think he can and is playing that P.J. Tucker role. Like, I think that's a good – a good parallel. We've seen the Bucks win with just leaning into defense before, but no, you don't have the Drew next to him for the perimeter, and Brooke is not the same that he was three years ago, which, I mean, should be obvious. 35 years old, I think, now, and, and that big. He's still good, but I don't think the same level of impact. But it's just hard. I just feel like they're kind of between identities, and I think they were offense. They didn't like it, uh, and then the Griffin thing wore out, and then Doc leaned into what Giannis wants to do and Brooke and these guys and defense. And that's great. And they had some great defensive games, but I don't know, can they be a defensive first team through four playoff rounds? And will they win that way? Uh, it hasn't looked great the last couple of weeks. They haven't been whole at all. I mean, that's the other, they're just old and injured all the time, but it, it's going to be interesting to see like, what's their identity in the playoffs now? Cause it was always defense. Their offense was ugly. And now it's like, they want to be defense and they are sometimes, but now the offense it's somehow still ugly with Dame, which really just is like only the Bucks could do this. Well, the the injury, like we look at all these changes they made. Yeah. And Bud and coaches and Dame and but if you look at when they won that they won the title and they overcame injury to do that, but then they won. The next year, uh what was it? Middleton was hurt. Yep. The next year, Giannis was hurt. Here we yep. are now. Giannis is Giannis like Giannis is hurt. So yeah. there, we're, we're we're like making these, we're moving mountains in these off seasons. Like we fired a coach with who was going to number one coach, coach in the All Star game. History. Like we fight, we fight, and and we traded Drew Holiday and let him yeah. go to the team that he shouldn't. We absolutely couldn't. All, but but you can look at it and just be like. We should have done anything. We should we yeah. should just we should have just not done. It. They get they got hurt. There's a built-in excuse, and they're still they're still moving all these mountains. So I I don't know. I mean, it's you can't do anything about it now. But I if they were this if they if they were just a healthy version of the team they've had the last few years, I think everybody would look at them as the favorite. Yeah, at but least been all there. these injuries. They didn't they didn't they didn't change because I mean I don't know. It's just and so then you think well. Is John Horse maybe doing too much? I know Horse God is the man, yeah. but can he can he can he take a day off? I mean, he's training for Dame on his GD vacation. Like, <laughs> enjoy your vacation. Well, I, I do wonder. I mean, I you know we have a new owner in town who seems relatively active, and in, uh, in Jimmy and D has some new owners, I guess co-owners. Um, and I think certainly, like, it was in the story. Uh, governors. You know, governors, yeah, excuse me. Don't want to offend anyone. Um, privileged class. Uh, protected class. I mean, uh, they've been through a lot as billionaires. But, you know, I think it was, like, very pointed out in the articles. Like, the, 
the last draw for Griffin was the Cleveland game where they got blown out in front of the Haslam's, which I think, I don't know if that's always noted in the stories. I, I'll tell you, I, I do know it's almost certainly not a coincidence. I, I think there's just a level of activity there. And I'm not absolving Horace. Like, I do think it, it's a tough one because I would have done pretty, like, all the moves he has made, or almost all of them, I've been like, yeah, that's a good, I agree with that move. Oh, yeah. But your seat's probably still warm just because everything's gone poorly. And it's like, you know, there's a reason that you know, I, I don't make the calls for the Bucks. I, I call into a microphone, um, whatever. And it, it's tough, though, because I think, yeah, the guy goes and gets Dame, and it's now is his seat warm. And I do think the, the worst thing is they're too old, and they're obviously too old, and it's, it's glaring sometimes. And, like, in the games when Giannis is out, like, your best driver is – I mean, Dame has not been great at it outside of him – Pat Bev or Pat Connaughton are your guys who you're putting in there to get to the rim. Like, that's not good. I mean, they just, they look old. All, even when the honest is in, they look old. They're always lower in transition points than they should be. But then again, Marjan Beauchamp, Andre Jackson Jr., A.J. Green are on the roster. These young guys, they don't play. And how much of that is roster construction? How much of that is coaching? They played more under Griffin, for sure. But uh, those days are over uh, with Mr. Rivers. It's interesting. I mean, But I think to the, to the horse thing, I think everyone's seat is hot right now. And if it goes badly, it's going to stay that way. I mean, I think nobody is – I mean, obviously Giannis isn't, you know, going to get booted out. It would be his decision. But, I mean, like, no one in the org feels great right now. And it's all – it sucks that it's like this in, in the NBA, but it is. It's all playoffs, and we've known it. And that's why we had all the changes. They lost in the first round last year, and you really can't do that twice in a row. No, and that, with it being the Pacers, like – uh, th- this this should this should be it's not it's not a bye week by any means, but if oh, you're wow. gonna if, if you're gonna if you're gonna need time to get a guy healthy like I don't think much of the Pacers. Um, I yeah, think that, I think it was it was the second best team you could. I think only Orlando was better. Yeah, I know they just beat the hell out of the Bucks, which doesn't make me look good here. But I think I think Orlando was the best case first round. I think Pacers were second best. I think Miami or Philly are real teams. Yeah, with real coaches that are and playoff superstars. Yeah. Well, Embiid regular season, but we'll the see. Pacers think because they took silver in the IST, <laughs> like they think they are something. Yeah, Ty- Tyrese Halliburton. All of a sudden, he's like, he's just like stepped to the front. He's like, I'm the face of the league now, and then yeah. everyone's like, No, you're not. He goes, Yeah, I am. And then they're like, All right, well, play well. And then he didn't. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's like okay, it's so such a weird second half for them. He he faded away, so that's why like coming into this playoff, I think there's a lot of anxiety, but I think a lot of people have got like who knows. I mean, this, but if you lose to the Pacers, uh, it would yeah, it bad. would be the worst of any of these playoff exits uh, in the Giannis yeah. era. It would be the worst because they're not going to the finals. I mean, let's. You know, every other team they lost to went to the finals since since Bud showed up. And it's every like, other team so, in the East would probably beat them. Yeah, at least including the, the Bulls and Hawks. Wow, <laughs> you're just you're way lower on the Pacers than I am. I mean, they haven't figured it out. They did just score 157 points, which the Bucks have been struggling to do in two games recently. Um, but it was against the Hawks, so that doesn't shouldn't really count. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's probably too harsh. Plus, the Bulls are like the most. If you had to construct a team that looked like they could win 50 games but would never win more than 39, yeah, they, they have the perfect concoction for that. They fascinate me because they're just like re- weirdly really good in crunch time. And I think it's just – I don't know what it is. But I, I admitted recently that like I've been watching their late games just to like feel – some more joy and just fun of watching. I watched more NCAA tournament than I've ever watched, both men's and women's, because I was just like, I need non-Bucks basketball in my life. I don't want to be like this. I would love to just watch Bucks. I would love to re-watch the games. I'm not re-watching Bucks magic. I can't do it. I need I need better play, Bart. Yeah, I was on a, an airplane on Sunday, so I didn't watch. That was a that good call. Game. Unfortunately, uh, I don't I don't have any of the vi- any of the game in my brain, so. I can kind of get past that one. I do think of memories of um, when they played the Pacers back in like 99 and 2000. Oh. And I, I was like, like, so what would I have been? 15? 
it was just so weird that the Bucks, because you know they were good in the '80s, but then in the '90s they weren't. No. And it was so it was so weird that the Bucks were in the playoffs. And now we're talking about this team and all their problems, but they still were the three seed. I mean, yeah. But you Very know, thing, things have been raised, obviously. But I, I do, I do think that there's. And this is my constant fight against the youth. I do, I do think that there's like, I'm the '70s and '80s Packer guy about the Bucks. Um, like that, it, there was a time when being in the playoffs and and the games like. One game was played on like a Thursday at 1.30, I think, for some reason. It was really weird. I remember watching it at my friend's house like after – like we skipped school. To, I don't know. Weird <laughs> memory, but it's just uh, – yeah. and now 25 years ago, we got to play this version. Yeah, I'm pulling up this. They played them two years in a row. One year they got I swept. Didn't... Yep, yep. Reggie Miller uh, didn't, didn't give them much joy that year. And those were best of fives back then. Yeah, so they got they lost in three, and then they lost in five in two thousand. Now, if the Bucks were playing in a best of five, now I'd be crapping my pants. Yeah, thank God we got the extra games for for Giannis to have some more time here. They the Pacers were dominant against us, but they didn't. We haven't played them since what January. Yeah, so no Pat Bev and and no no Siakam games, and like I, I don't know how much of it. This is the big convo with them right now. How much of Halliburton's play? is him dealing through that injury that he clearly rushed his way back from. I think he picked up a little bit, but also I've seen some pretty convincing like on off numbers that uh, Buddy Heald was super important to them offensively. Cause they don't really have like their shooting is a little suspect outside of him, especially the non Halliburton players. And it seems like the lack of spacing has hurt Halliburton a lot too. So it's, it's big. It's a constant, a big moment for him to kind of, you know, prove that he is the guy that he looked like in the ISD. Uh, and obviously for the Bucks, you know, just to to not be, I mean, just the laughing stock of the league if they go out in the first round two years in a row. And I, for Dame, I mean, I, he said he was, you know, going to get the lick back in the Bucks Pacers after the IST or after the championship or whatever, and they lost to him again. So there's definitely, uh, I think, kind of a personal uh, rivalry going as well. Robert Trailer played four minutes in that 2000 series. RIP. All right, RIP, RIP. Um, so give me your million dollar answer. Oh, man. Because now I want to say they're going to win it all. Yeah. But I'm well, not, you can... know, people keep like, I don't know if it's like, hey, that was a thing you did, or they're like cocking off about put the chairs out. Oh, the chairs thing is never going to go away. It was I, 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 I did not do that. Like, I, I want to be very clear. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, when I, when I put the chairs out, oh, two, I didn't put them out as like, oh, I hope this works. I, I, I knew every fiber yeah. of me knew they were going to win that series. I knew it. Now, why didn't I put money on it? I just bet my reputation instead. <laughs> so I should have done that. But I don't. So I don't have that. I certainly don't have that feeling this year. No, you got to respect the chairs. You got to wait to put the chairs until you know it again. Uh, I when they're they're down 0-2 on Boston, you put the chairs, and that I think could be the right. Depending if you feel it, but I think that's. I don't think you can put the chairs out before Boston this year. I just. I here's here's what I will say. What I feel. I don't feel like we've got another two months of Bucks basketball. No, I don't think so. I don't it feel doesn't... like, I don't feel like, like, I just, that's what I don't, that's what I feel. I don't, we're going to be talking about them in June. We're going to, we're going to be, we're going to be talking about the 27 and 15 brewers and 20 mini cans. The... 40 and two brewers. Sorry, they lost three already. The 40 and three brewers. I think I think they're up to four losses. I've been I've been talking brewers on so many pods just to talk less bucks as percentage of time. Started out with the brewers all the time. Wore a brewers jersey on our pod yesterday. Had no brewers talk except for uh just what the game was going on. They lost that game. I gotta stop. The Lucroy is not working for me anymore. I gotta pick up a Churio or or something. But anyway, uh I'll I'll stop. I'll answer the question. I am legitimately worried, and I, I think it's, like, very close a few different percentage-wise. But I'm going to say lose to the Pacers for now. And I, I'm hoping it's a reverse <laughs> jinx. What? But I really am. I, I don't feel good about this team. I don't feel good about the place they're in. I don't feel good about the honest injury. 
and I'm begging for them to make me look stupid. That's all I want. I want Dame to make me look like the biggest idiot in the state of Wisconsin. I'm praying for it. Make a diss track about me, but back it up on the court. That's what I really want. I don't care about the song. Yeah, I feel like we're all with Giannis, the injury. It's like, oh, he might miss game one. I think I'm worried about that. I'm worried about, oh, no, he's yeah. gonna, so he's going to miss game two. Okay. So then, and then he's yeah. just like not going to play. And we basically got the Blazers. Yeah, which has not gone well historically. Yeah, we ain't winning anything with, if we just have the Blazers. No. One conference finals run where they did not. I, don't, I think he's like never won a game against Steph in his playoff career. Mm. So, I mean, it's hard to, hard to beat the Warriors regardless, but yeah. So I'm prepared for less than two months, and you're prepared for the season to be over in nine days. Yeah, prepared for. I don't want it. People are going to say, hey, uh, this is the funny thing, is whatever you say you think is going to happen, people think it's what you're rooting for. But people say, you hate Dame, you hate the Bucks, blah, blah, blah. Go back three weeks. When, when did they play the Thunder? I, I was ready to say, yeah, they're going to win the playoffs. They might lose two games the whole playoff run. They look amazing. And then they just completely lost the rope. So I don't know, man. This team is... Be, this is the most befuddling. I said it's the most disappointing team. It's also the hardest to, like, just keep up with team I've ever covered since I've been doing the Buck stuff. Because even even in talking about this, there's a, there's a little bit of pessimistic nature right now. But then I'm thinking to myself, oh, D- what well, Dame's just gonna go nuts? Yeah, Giannis gonna come back. But then when I'm like, I just can't. Because they haven't they haven't given us a a good. It's the consistency. The high so all you guys are right. All, all you guys that are you're gonna you know. I, I'm just again. I'm not when I'm saying oh they're gonna be fine. They're, I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm not ready to worry yet, <laughs> which I think yeah. in the long run will make it worse. I don't know. I mean, I that's the thing. I'm not. I'm not one of these people who it's like if they if they lose in six to the Pacers, I'm not going to be like yeah, I told you guys so, and be like, dude, this sucks. I don't want this. There are people who will who will do both. I mean, there's, you know, after Griffin got canned, there was a whole round. And, like, listen, I mean, I it feels good to know what's going on, but it doesn't feel good ultimately when, like, you were right about that. It's like the – the I, I keep seeing big short clips on my TikTok. Have you seen the big short? Yeah. When Pitt, when Pitt is like, you know, you guys are betting against the U.S. economy and, like, thousands of people are going to die if we're right and everything. That's That's – and it's just as serious to me too. That's how I feel about this Bucks take. Well, everyone, th- what I've noticed is the Bucks are they, they are the l- expectations on them is it's weird. Like na- yeah. I'm telling you, nationally, uh, and we all see it. Even like we put a lot of you know I'm always yelling at Bucks Twitter. Yeah, but nationally, it's like, what do we win as many? This this whole thing, oh the Knicks, the like, oh what a joy! It's everybody like found reasons to enjoy every other team. Oh the Knicks are doing this, this is so fun. Oh look yeah. at the Timberwolves and the, this is so fun. Oh even the Suns like they're as just a big of a mess, but no one cares. But it's the yeah. it's like the Bucks have disappointed everyone, even if you don't care about them. Everyone's yeah. lining up. That's that's the that, it, that we don't have to win to feel joy. We just need – God, this sucks. I'm not even excited. I, know. I don't even think I'm excited. I mean, again, though, that's the funny thing about it. A great 12 minutes to start game one, and I'm like completely – I've never flip-flopped this much in my life. This Bucks team is no, just Oh, you like, had a great – I saw I saw what was going on on Sunday, and um, everyone's just like, this is the Bucks. This is ready. We're going into the playoffs, and then they suck the rest of the game. Gone. Yep. First 12 minutes, I was like, damn, playoff basketball. They gave up like 20, 22 points in the first quarter, and a couple of them were lucky shots. And then second quarter starts, they just can't score at all. They couldn't get a single bucket, and they couldn't stop the Orlando transition because they're just so slow, and and that was that. Well, let's have fun commiserating. Yeah. It's probably going to suck and be very painful, but (laughs) this is our team. I hope not, man. Yeah, I, I just mean, want people to remember be... we did win one. We won. We won. Okay, it's really, really hard to do in Milwaukee. The Bucks out. have a title. We keep acting like they've never won. Well, they got two of them. Yeah, we saw one though. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we forget that. I think we forget I mean, that. again, I am so ready to be like, no, damn it. They figured it out. They did flip the switch. I hate the flip the switch combo. But, I mean, Dame has almost basically verbatim said, like, playoffs are different intensity. Like, we're going to be ready for the playoffs, which is pretty much like saying, yeah, we're going to flip it. Maybe, so is it I, fair I to say they that they just did not try? Most of the season, most of the second half of the season, yeah. Especially when there were guys out, I think for sure. That's weird. It's bad. I don't think it's good. I think it's bad. I think, like, I think it works if you have LeBron and they don't have LeBron. Yeah. Shit. That sucks. <laughs> All right. Ty Windish, Eurostep Podcast. I'm Bart Winkler into the Winklerverse. Yeah. Appreciate talking to you. Go Brewers. Go Brewers, baby. Yes, I'm going to lead every show. Guess what happened with the Brewers? Guess I, I'm sad Andrew Monasterio got option. This is what oh, I'm thinking about. I know. About no, I, I went through the freaking records of the West teams to see who would have home court in the finals. I can't quit these bucks. I, I'm always going to be locked in watching. I've had people say, why don't you turn off the game? They're down late in the fourth to the Raptors. I go, someone's got someone's to gotta see what's going on here. It's me. So we'll be covering it. Uh, post-game pods every playoffs. We're going to do a bunch of Pacers previews because we, as much as the Pacers team annoys me, some of their media is great. So we'll, we'll be doing some opposition intel and stuff over on our show. And obviously you're doing – Milwaukee sports all the time on Into the Winklerverse. So everyone from our side, if you're not already, go subscribe wherever you listen to the Eurostep or watch it. We're both on YouTube as well. Uh, and gspn.info is where you can find all of our other links for anyone looking for more Bucks content. And Brewers. That's my Packers <laughs> draft next week. That's, that's a ball too. Yeah, you got it all. Good stuff. All right, thanks, buddy. Thank you. Talk soon, Bart. Hopefully we're a lot happier next time. We won't be. Ha, ha, ha.